I'm going to try giving my sermon from here this morning, so we'll see how that goes. How to talk about grief, comma, someone else's. Or how to learn from Reverend Otto's mistakes. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. We're good. For those at home, there was a fire engine that was making some noise over there. Part one, acknowledge to yourself that you have absolutely no idea what to say and that nothing you say will make things better. You cannot bring the person who has died back. You cannot reverse the divorce. When I was at my first job after college, my boss's brother died unexpectedly. She was understandably devastated. But I was 23, which is not to say that some 23-year-olds don't understand grief, but I, at 23, didn't. I had no idea what to say to her. So I kept my head down and said basically nothing when she returned to work. I was so afraid of saying the wrong thing. This, my friends, is not the right move. How to talk about grief, someone else's part two. Know that you will say the wrong thing. Okay, so there, there are some things that you should never say to someone who is grieving. First up, everything happens for a reason. First of all, in most, you, it, it, first of all, in most Unitarian Universalist theology, everything doesn't happen for a reason. And that implies that the grief event is for some greater purpose. And it feels like it just minimizes pain. See also, it's all part of God's plan, and God needed them in heaven. Don't say they're in a better place, because you don't know what that person believes. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie writes in her book, Notes on Grief, about this exact phrase. She says, how would you know? And shouldn't I, the bereaved, be privy to this information first? Should I really be learning this from you? These are, the big, these are the big ones, but please don't tell anybody not to cry or to be strong for others or that you know how they feel because nobody knows how someone else feels. And before I go on, if you've said these things, and certainly I have, please forgive yourselves. And remember, I'm a trained minister. I went to three years of school for this. I did both a hospital chaplaincy internship and a two-year church internship just to know what to say in these situations, and even I feel awkward and say the wrong thing sometimes. Which leads me to how to talk about grief, someone else's part three. Do not let your fear of saying the wrong thing prevent you from showing up for someone who's grieving. Saying something is better than saying nothing at all. Sending a card or an email is better than not. Show up at the funeral. When my father-in-law died five years ago, I saw how much it meant to my wife, Amy, that people came to the funeral. It matters if you show up. It matters if you say something, even if you don't know what to say. How to talk about grief, someone else's part four. Know that it's never over. Psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross developed something called the five stages of grief, and I'm positive you've heard of them, but here's a refresher. Stage one, denial. This didn't really happen. Joan Didion describes in her book, The Year of Magical Thinking, that she couldn't possibly donate her husband's organs after his death as he requested, because he might still need them. Stage two, anger. How could this happen? Anger might be directed at God, the universe, yourself for not stopping it, or even the person who died. Elizabeth Albert talks in Modern Loss about the death of her brother and how even now, years later, her mother can't talk about him without getting angry that he's no longer around. Step three, bargaining. Okay, if I do something, will I be able to stop the bad thing from happening? Will I be able to reverse it? Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie describes how when her sister told her she was going to tell people about their father's death, she cried, no, don't, because if you do it, then it will become true. Stage four, depression. Grief's not only about death, right? 
This is when we think of when we when we think of grief, wallowing, which isn't bad, being unable to move with the weight of what happened. Right? So as I was saying, it's not just about death. When my girlfriend in college broke up with me, which was my first real heartbreak, I spent longer than I'd like to admit in my dorm room, skipping class, watching the West Ring, and eating gummy bears. It was all I could bring myself to do. And finally, stage five, acceptance. Understanding and accepting that the person is gone or that the relationship has ended, right, etc. This kind of description of grieving is so fully present in our culture that you might be surprised at how much it's criticized and not universally accepted. Robert J. Kestenbaum, a recognized expert in aging and death, makes the following points. The existence of these stages has not been demonstrated, and no evidence has been presented that people actually do move from stage one through stage five. What I've learned is that grief is more like a spiral or an up and down mess. A friend of mine, Aaron Donahue, made this graph, if you can put it up, Maddie, after his beloved dog died. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can do it, zoom in. Can you? I should have asked you to do this before right now. Okay, well, what it looks like, you probably can't see me. So what it looks like is there's a graph and it says what I expected and it goes, the grief event happens, it goes all the way down and it slowly comes up and you're back to normal. And then what actually happened is it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up. And then a long time passes and then it goes down again and then it goes up, right? Okay, so he expected that there was a way he was going to, oh, there we go, time goes by. See, it goes down and up and down. He expected that there was going to be a way that he was going to feel, right? From my experience, from his experience, I mean, he learned that this wasn't true. Your mood goes up and down even after a long time. You get hit with those hard feelings about your grief. Aaron has no experience in studying grief, by the way. He's an engineer, and this is just how it felt to him. But it's surprisingly true to the research. All right, thank you. And the stages go back and forth, right? Have you ever thought you needed to call someone who died? That's denial, right? Grief changes over time, that's for sure. It might not feel as acute, but it will always be there. We always live with that grief. It becomes a part of us. And lots of us know this, even when it seems that we forget that when we're not in the midst of a low moment. So what does this mean for part four of how to talk about grief, someone else's? Everyone you are talking to, everyone in this room, everyone online, has the potential to be grieving right now. Check in with people two weeks, two months, two years down the road. Check in with people at holidays, at birthdays. How to talk about grief, someone else is part five. There is nothing more powerful to a grieving person than to share the stories and memories of the person they loved. This goes doubly so for a person who is in the midst of dying themselves. When we are aware that we are dying, we are in grief as well. It's called anticipatory grief. There is something truly powerful about asking to hear the stories of someone's life. Life stories need to be passed on. Let people share these memories with you. And finally, how to talk about grief, someone else's part six. Let them laugh. Might sound weird, but laughter is such a part of the grieving process. I needed to give it its own section. I've sat in the library of this church planning so many funerals for people I don't know. And the room is always filled with laughter as people talk about their beloved. Let them laugh. Okay, so here comes the really hard part. How to talk about grief, comma, your own. Jermanda Ngozi Adichie says, grief is a cruel kind of education. You learn how ungentle mourning can be, how full of anger. You learn how glib condolences can feel. You learn how much grief is about language, the failure of language and the grasping for language. Would it surprise you to know that the steps for talking about your own grief are similar to those for talking about someone else's? How to talk about grief your own, part one. People are going to be awkward. Talk about your grief anyways. This is hard. Sometimes people avoid those who are grieving, like I did with my boss. But if someone asks you how you are and you trust them, be vulnerable. Tell them the truth about how you are doing. 
I'm not okay is an okay thing to say. Your vulnerability, your truthfulness matters. It allows you to live out the pain of this grief that won't leave. It's okay to say years later that it was hard to pass the anniversary of their death, that it was hard to celebrate holidays without them, that you just miss them. How to talk about grief, your own, part two. Acknowledge the grief isn't linear and don't shame yourself for still feeling it. How to talk about grief, your own, part three. It is okay to speak ill of the dead. This is a big one. If you've lost someone that you have a complicated relationship with that wasn't simply a beautiful soul, you might feel grief. But the truth of that person will still be present. It's okay to name that someone wasn't perfect in their life. It's okay to say that someone was abusive or hurt you in some way. The truth is powerful and meaningful and can be healing. Let yourself say it. I've done funerals for people where the family needed to hear that this person wasn't perfect. So please have permission to do that as well. How to talk about grief, your own part four, your feelings will surprise you. You might feel sadness, anger, but you might also feel relief. And then guilt, and then shame about that relief. When my grandfather died, my grandmother acknowledged to me that she felt some relief in not having to care for him anymore. That is okay, and that is real. How to talk about grief, your own part five, grief isn't only about death. John James identifies in the Grief Recovery Handbook many other experiences that cause grief. Among them, moving, starting school, marriage, might that surprise you, graduation, end of addictions, major health changes, disability, retirement, financial changes, positive or negative, holidays, legal problems, empty nest. So please know that it's okay to feel grief about any of these and more. Any change comes with grief. Sometimes people feel grief because we change the floor in one of the social halls here. That is okay, right? It's okay to feel grief. Which leads me to how to talk about grief, comma, collective. Oof. We are experiencing collective grief right now, aren't we? I personally can't stop thinking about Israel and Palestine, especially the children. A Catholic, a Catholic colleague of mine reminded me yesterday that this isn't about me. I'm not Muslim or Jewish or Palestinian or Israeli. I'm true. I said this last week, right? But I am experiencing grief, and we talked about this, right? But let's just remember that we're not all in the same place and give comfort to those in the center of this, to those who are most impacted by this war. When the attacks at the Pulse nightclub happened, I was shocked and devastated as a queer person. For the first time, I wished that people would have a little tattoo on their heads that read, I'm queer, so that I could look at them and know that maybe they felt what I did. And I imagine that this must be what Jewish and Muslim people are feeling right now, Israelis and Palestinians, so much more. And yet, the steps are the same from here. As you recognize that this kind of collective grief can feel like personal grief when it impacts your own community. So be gentle with each other and gentle with yourselves because you might be grieving. And that's okay. Friends, you who are grieving, which is all of us, know that you are loved and held in the circle of all that is sacred. Your grief is welcome here. Your pain is welcome here. All of you is welcome here. And know that you can talk about grief here, no matter how hard or awkward or sad it might be. Your tears and your laughter your sorrows and your memories are welcome here. May it be so. Let us stay together. Amen. Amen.